Good morning, everybody, here in person at St. Francis Church on this wonderful sunny morning. Good morning to everybody at home on Zoom, and good morning to everybody joining us via Outreach Radio this morning. Welcome to our service. My name is Ian. I'm one of the people who contributes to the leadership team here in our church. So if you were here yesterday, the church looks very different to yesterday when we were joined by Outreach Radio and outside in the garden, uh, we were able to have a little Valley Park Life Festival, which was incredible. And it was great to welcome lots and lots of people, a couple of hundred people from our community, uh, wonderful music, great food, great joy, fun and laughter. And if you were here, you'll know exactly what I meant. And uh, thank you to those people at Outreach who were able to uh, present on an outside broadcast from here and also presented some of the music live. So if you were listening yesterday at home somewhere, I really hope you enjoyed it. And maybe one day you get to come here in person and meet some of us who were involved. This morning, we're going to think about a special event in the life of Jesus, his ascension into heaven. So let us gather our thoughts and prepare to think about that event and what it means to us. We'll just start with a few words from a psalm. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. Lord God, we come before you today united by the Holy Spirit to hear your word, to celebrate your gracious son, Jesus Christ. Be with us as we hear about your ascension and what it means to us today. And we will join together on the words on the screen. It will be this side and it's up here. Find whichever screen you can see most clearly without hurting your neck too much. Hopefully you can see one of them. And we say together, Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we now think about the week that's passed. Think about the, this morning. Things that haven't gone as you would have liked. Things that haven't been as you might wish. And we're going to confess those things to God. Hold them present in your mind as I say these words. Brothers and sisters, What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us with our hearts open wide to the Lord, confess to those things that have gone wrong as he prepares good things for those who love him. And we all say together and we join in acknowledging the good work that God does. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong will we have done and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Because God is merciful and gracious, we are able to join together to acknowledge the forgiveness that God offers to one and all who repent. So we are able to say together and declare what God has done. So we say together, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To collect our prayers together this morning, to round up this part of prayer, I'll say the collect for today, Ascension Sunday. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God your Father, the Father. Amen. And we're now going to sing. We are going to, if you are able, please stand and sing. Uh, we're going to sing The Lion and the Lamb. Over to Suzanne and the band. Please take a seat. Um, I'm going to ask Sarah 
I think, who I now have to officially refer to after yesterday as Reverend Sarah, because that seemed to be all you ever called. <laughs> you all know Sarah. I'm Reverend, so you don't need to call me <laughs> Reverend Sarah. <laughs> oh, it's kind of an identifier along with the dog collar, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Sarah. Hello. Um, you want to speak to us about uh, an idea we've got uh, that's based on something called Thy Kingdom Come. Ah, so, so there's an initiative. Um, thanks, Ian. There's um, a prayer initiative that lots of you will probably have heard of. It's called Thy Kingdom Come. It's a global prayer initiative. It's ecumenical. It's something that's um, taken place since about 2016. And it's a real encouragement for Christians all over the world to simply pray that people might know Jesus. We believe that in Jesus is the fullest possible life uh, on this earth and of course uh, to go on to eternity. And so that's why we think that this is something really brilliant to do, to simply pray that people would come to know Jesus, that his kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, many of you will know about it, but it happens from Ascension Day, which was last Thursday, through to Pentecost, which is next Sunday. We'll be celebrating it here. Um, but Jesus told his disciples before he left to go and wait. He said, go and wait, uh, and I'm going to send you, uh, I can't remember his exact words, depends which version you look at. He didn't say, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, because I didn't know till it came. <laughs> he came. Um, but he said, go and wait, and I'm going to send you someone from the Father. Um, and so the church uses it as an opportunity to wait and to pray, and that's what we'd love to do with just one simple initiative. We're going to watch a video, I think, Ian, aren't we? And then you're going to talk us through how we can take part in that initiative. Thank you so much. There was a great preacher called D.L. Moody who had a hundred friends who didn't know Jesus that he prayed for every day. And when one of them became a Christian, he had just ticked their name off the list. By the time he died, 96 of those hundred had given their lives to Jesus. And at his funeral, the final four also became Christians. There's such power in praying pray for, for our, our friends, friends who don't, don't yet know Jesus. Jesus. In not, not just, just doing it once in a while, or when we feel like it, it but, but regularly, persevering with, with discipline. discipline. And, and so, so I'm going to tie, tie these five knots in this leather strap, strap and wear, wear it to remind myself of just five friends I know who I long to come to know the good news of Jesus. As you came into church this morning, if you're at home at Zoom or on the radio, you may need to go and try and find a piece of string or do this at a later date. You'll find there is pieces of string on the backs of all the pews that you, all the chairs that you sat on. If you don't have one, my glamorous assistant is going to run around and hand out some more. I don't know why people are laughing. This is my very glamorous assistant. Um, and... Uh, uh, and you have this piece of string, and the suggestion is that you think of five friends, five f members of your family maybe, five people you might work with, one of them may be someone you work with, one of them may be your neighbour, the person who literally lives, lives next door to you. It may be somebody very close to you at home who you live with. But you think of five people and... You, write, you tie five knots for each of those people on your piece of string. Has everybody got string? Anybody still missing string? There's one there, Brian. Uh, Brian? Cliff? Brian's on the video. Uh, and you tie those five people. And certainly, what we're going to try and do as a church what I would encourage you to do, as you know, I'm a teacher, so I'm setting you homework between now and next Sunday, which is Pentecost, as Sarah's just said, to try each day to pray for, for those five people. Perhaps to hold the piece of string, hold that knot between your thumb and forefinger and bring that person to mind and just say a prayer that they know Jesus more clearly and then move 
to the next knot and the next person. And you can pray for them to know Jesus more clearly. And you work your way through all five. Now, some of you might feel like my eldest son and be a bit of a surfer dude and want to try and tie it round your wrist and keep hold of it for the week. Some of you, like me, who might have to wear a suit next week, might want to just put it in your pocket. Because it's amazing how often you put your hand in your pocket during a day. And you'll put your hand in your pocket and go, what's that? Oh, it's that piece of string. And maybe now is the time I can remember them. Some of you may put it next to your bed. Some of you may put it next to your toothbrush. So when you get up and you go to brush your teeth, you find this piece of string on your toothbrush and you can't get to your toothbrush until you go past that piece of string. There might be something in your, or put it on the toaster or in the cereal so it comes out <laughs> with the cereal. Just somewhere where you're not going to miss it. Not going to miss it. Ah, oh, groans. I didn't know that one. Uh, my glamorous assistant pointed that one out. For, for one week, try to do it. For some of you, it may become a habit. Some of you might really want the challenge, as we heard on the video, of writing down all your friends and regularly praying for them. But until Pentecost, keep this string dear. Keep it close to hand and pray for those five people. We're going to hear a reading from the Bible now. So I'm going to ask Mike Hook to come up. He's going to read us a passage from Acts. And then after Mike has read, Steve is going to come up and speak to us about them. This morning's reading is taken from Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Steve's going to come up and speak to us about that. We'll just say a quick prayer for you, Steve, if that's okay. Father God, as we think about this passage where Jesus is ascended into heaven and his disciples and the women meet regularly and pray, we ask that Steve gives us thoughts about this passage, applies them to our lives, and we ask that your Holy Spirit speaks through him to us now. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. 
that's much better than I got from the 8.30 service earlier on. That's brilliant. Because <laughs> you're all awake. Thank you. So today is the um, <clears throat> Sunday after Ascension Day. And we celebrate Jesus' ascension into heaven. Now, how many of us hate to say goodbye? We all have had said goodbye at some point. We've said goodbye when we leave church. We say goodbye to people when they leave our house or when we're leaving work. Um, and sometimes over, during the COVID time, we've said goodbye over things such as Zoom. I have to say that when I retired a couple of years back, I had to say goodbye over Zoom to the colleagues I was working with. I was sad to say goodbye to them, especially over Zoom. I have to say I wasn't that sad to say goodbye to the organization I was working for, but please don't record that or, or anything. <laughs> they are still paying my pension. So whatever the reason is, it can obviously be hard to say goodbye. But we see in the passage today that the disciples appeared to be saying goodbye to Jesus. This must have come as a bit of a shock to them. I mean, they were originally thinking that Jesus was going to rid them of the Romans. Then they saw him being crucified as a common criminal. And then after the resurrection, seeing him alive again. It must have been something of a roller coaster ride for the disciples. But now that Jesus was back with them, alive, they must have thought, right, now is the time for the kingdom of God to come. Now is the time for people to get rid of the Romans. So the disciples ask him, is the time now? And if not now, when? They must have been excited at this thought. But what does Jesus do? He tells them not to be concerned about the time or the date. God has that in hand and they are not to worry about it. He then says they are to wait and to receive the gift from God, Holy Spirit, at which point he does something quite surprising as they see him ascend into the clouds. The disciples must have been wondering what on earth was going on. What was happening now? Why couldn't Jesus just do as they wanted? It took two angels to tell the disciples that Jesus was going to heaven and that at some point he would be returning in the same way. So it wasn't quite an episode of a goodbye, but more of a see you later as Jesus goes ahead of us to be with God. Now we're not told in Acts that the disciples were happy with what they witnessed. Only they went on their way back to Jerusalem as Jesus had told them to. Perhaps they had seen so many amazing things that they thought they had better do as they were told. But from this, there are two points that for me stand out from this passage. The first is to understand why the ascension took place. Why didn't Jesus just stay with the disciples as they probably thought he would? Well, the ascension is a major part of the gospel. It can be thought of as a major step in God's rescue mission of us, the good news of how God brings us back into a loving relationship with himself. By coming to earth as a person, God, as his son, entered into human existence. In the ascension, that humanity is taken up into the presence of God. This means that we have a high priest interceding for us who is able to sympathize with our challenges our dilemmas, our suffering, and our weaknesses. Jesus has gone ahead of us and intercedes for us with God. Just think about this for a moment. We have a God who understands exactly what we're going through, what life is like on earth, all the good and the bad. Not a God who has no idea what life is like, but a God who does understand how we feel. It also shows that Jesus really has overcome death. He wasn't resurrected to die again, but to live forever. And the fact that Jesus' followers witnessed him ascending into the clouds leaves no doubt that he is in fact alive with the Father in heaven. And he is no longer limited to living on earth. As I said, he's interceding for us as he knows what life is like for us on earth. The second point is that the ascension allows something else to happen. 
In John's Gospel, Jesus himself had told his disciples that it was good for him to go away because only then would he send them another helper, the Spirit of Truth. And that's exactly what happened at Pentecost, which we celebrate next week. By the ascension, God then allows his Holy Spirit to come and be with all of us, so that we as the church can achieve the mission that God has given us. Think back to the passage we read earlier, especially verse 8 where it says that, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. By the ascension, God gives the church its global mission. We know that in Matthew's Gospel is the great commandment to make disciples of all nations. And here the commandment or instruction is given again to all of us, that we are to go to the ends of the earth proclaiming God's kingdom. What Jesus is telling us is that discipleship is not about dates and times, but about being ready and telling people about what God has done for us. Not looking upwards, but looking towards the world. It is about receiving the Holy Spirit and being witnesses for the kingdom of God. God gives us his spirit so that we can share in the life and work of Jesus. The disciples are told to be witnesses in excuse me, Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria. Hearing that they would be witnesses to Samaria came as a bit of a, su a surprise to the disciples. The people of Judea and Galilee considered themselves to be people of God, but they regarded Samaritans as outsiders. And what about to the ends of the earth? The phrase ends of earth here signifies the whole planet. But why the ends of the earth? Jesus is making sure the disciples understand the nature and focus of their mission not just in the immediate area, but to Gentiles, to everyone, and to the whole world. The disciples were commissioned to witness by the power of the Holy Spirit to all peoples wherever they were. And today we're God's witnesses. We are his evidence to convince an unbelieving world that is, that is the work that God wants us to do. We are witnesses to everyone, all peoples everywhere. We have God's promise that his spirit will be with us. And as next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, I dare say we'll be hearing about more about next week. But the interesting thing here is that Jesus is sending the disciples into the world. Not just the evangelists, not just the people on a rota, if you can have such rotas for evangelism, etc. But people like you and me. Because of the ascension, God is sending us out into the world. But how do we do this? Do we leave the church here today, get our passports, if they're in order and the dates are right, and get some plane tickets and off we go? Well, we can do. But how about starting in our local area with our families and friends? Now, earlier on, just earlier on, we were asked to tie five knots in the piece of string. One for each person that we pray for. So perhaps we can start now, we can start today. We don't have to wait till next week or the week after, we can start this process today. In this passage we see that God has commanded his church, all of us to go into the world, proclaiming his message of what he has done for all of us. Through Jesus, his life, Jesus' death, his resurrection and his ascension. As we conclude this part of the service, Let's just take a few moments of silence with your string, if you have it, to pray and consider how we can realize God's commands, how we can go forth into the world, all of it, to proclaim his message. Let's just spend a few minutes and few moments in silence considering our response to God's commands. Lord God, we thank you for this Ascension Sunday 
and for your divine authority. Your word says you alone set the dates and times for things to happen, and it is through you that we receive power. We thank you for the ascension of your son, Jesus. Because of him, we are given authority and guidance here on earth through your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks because we know that someday you will return from heaven in the same way you send it from earth. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for uh, a great deal to think about. If the band would like to get themselves back into position, we're going to sing again. Um, and we're going to start by singing There is a Redeemer. So if you are able to stand, let's stand and sing. We're going to sing another song after that. And then, uh, and then we'll have some prayers. Thank you. Let's stand and sing. Thank you. <coughs> Suzanne?
take a seat and Katie is going to lead us in our prayer time this morning. Thank you Katie. Thank you. Hello everybody. It's great to be here to lead our prayers. Um, just to explain I'm going to leave some times just of a bit of silence where if you like you can kind of connect your own prayers and there'll be times when I'm going to say, your kingdom come. If you'd like to echo that out loud, your will be done, or you might want to just echo it in silence. So shall we pray? Father God, thank you that we're here this morning, that here and now we're looking back to that time 2000 years ago when Jesus was saying goodbye to being with his disciples in person as a human being. But thank you that he was in a way saying a new hello to being with them as your Holy Spirit. And so we're here today to say a new hello to you. And yes, please, we want to welcome you, Holy Spirit, to be with us. Thank you that after your disciples had said goodbyes, they went back home, back to their homes, and they spent a lot of time praying together. Father, we pray that you will deepen our desire, our longing to pray, to listen to you, to talk and to share all that you have to, risk, to give to us and all that we have to receive from you. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that even as you went back to be with your father, you lifted up your hands in blessing. And thank you that your hands still carried the scars of your suffering on the cross. So we pray for all who are suffering, all who experience scars from previous suffering, in whatever way that may be. We pray for those suffering throughout the world. We pray for countries scarred by war and conflict. Particularly, we pray for Sudan that the current ceasefire this coming week will happen and will hold and will be a step towards peace. 
we continue to pray for Ukraine, for those grieving, particularly in Bakhmut and, and the area there. And we pray for the G7 meeting in Japan just ending, that those leaders will take home tangible ways to further bring peace. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you knew what it was like to be human and to suffer. And you know that now for each of us in the deepest parts of who we are. So we bring to you now our deepest longings, the prayers we don't know how to voice. Maybe the pain or hurt or anger we hardly know how to express or we keep hidden so well from others. We open our hearts to you now and ask for your presence and healing. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord Jesus, thank you that you promised that your disciples would be your witnesses. And in the same way that your Holy Spirit was transforming them, we pray for ourselves and for each other. We thank you for the Thy Kingdom Come initiative. Thank you so much for the way it's spread around the world to so many people over these last few years. We pray that in these next days leading up to the celebration of Pentecost of, of your Holy Spirit, we are part of that that spreading of your good news. We thank you for every person who's been a link in that chain from what happened 2,000 years ago to us being here. That's kind of mind boggling to think of those people. Lord, we pray that as we've tied the knots in the string or we've thought of people to pray for, we will be part of the chain extending and growing and that those people will then extend to other people Lord, please prompt us now, who would you like us to be praying for? And how would you like us to do that? Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Thank you, Lord God, that you are at work throughout the world in so many ways. We pray that you open our eyes to see you. Bring us encouragement when it feels like there are overwhelming problems, particularly thinking about climate change and the what feel like overwhelming challenges there. In our cycle of prayers for the world, we're praying for the Indian Ocean Islands, for Madagascar, Mauritius, the Maldives, the Seychelles and Comoros. Lord, we pray for those fragile environments and particularly for difficulties they face as sea levels rise and people's homes are engulfed, as well as for all the plant and animal species threatened. We pray that you show us as a country with so many resources to share to be open and generous and practical in addressing climate challenges. We thank you for Christian Aid Week that's just ending and continue to pray for their work in Malawi for resilience to climate change and work with mothers and children in HIV prevention and treatment. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Thank you. Father, for the opportunities you give us to be part of a church locally. Wherever you are, just maybe think about your, your local sphere of, of being a person of, of God. That's where you are operating. And we would like to focus our prayers this week on young people in our church environments. We pray for here for our creche, caring for the very young and for their leaders. Pray for the junior church team 
for Hannah, our children and families minister, and the whole team and all the families and people there. And we pray for our youth group. Thank you for Fiona and Cliff, Lou, Phil and Sam. We pray that you continue to inspire them and that numbers will, will grow. And we pray for all young people doing GCSE and A-level exams, university exams, or whatever challenges they're facing. You might want to just take a few moments to pray for a young person that you know. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. As we pray for our church here, we pray for new friendships and conversations and links that were built through the festival here yesterday. We pray that you will grow these and all the conversations and listening and doing that we're going to be involved in in this coming week. Father, help us to be open to your presence, alive and at work, wherever we are. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Just remembering those disciples and how they'd asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, and he'd given them that prayer to pray once he'd left them. Shall we also join in that prayer together now? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen Thank you so much, Katie, for those prayers. Um, notices. Thank you so much, Ian and Katie. Why don't we just continue in prayer a little longer as we give thanks for the money that's been given. We don't take up a collection, but there's uh, uh, all sorts of ways you can give just outside uh, there. Uh, but let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for all that's given through bank accounts, through collection, um, in whatever way. Uh, Lord, above all, we long that that money might be used uh, to further your kingdom in this place, to share your love in our community and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Brilliant. Um, I, I've got some bands of marriage to read, and the book is right here, and the Guys getting married are right here as well. It's so exciting. Right, let me start. Um, so, bands of marriage, I know it's a kind of, it's a weird old thing, but it's, if um, you're going to get married in this church or you live in this community, uh, either or, then uh, you need to have these read, and it's an old-fashioned way of just making sure that there's no reason they shouldn't get married. So, it's, um, it, it, I love it because it gets a chance for us to know who's getting married in our community, and we get a chance to pray for them. So, let's do it. So, I published the bands of marriage between Mr. Jake Peter Arnold and Miss Zoe Ruth Barlow, both single and of the parish of St. John the Baptist Church, Egham, but to be married here in July. And this is the first time of asking. If anyone knows any reason why they shouldn't get married, you should have a word with me afterwards. I also published the bands of marriage between Mr. Thomas Fining and Miss Victoria Youngs, uh, both of this parish. And um, this is the second time of asking. And again, if anyone knows if any reason why they shouldn't get married, you should have a word with me, but let's pray for them. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for uh, Jake and Zoe and Thomas and Victoria looking forward to their weddings. And we pray for their preparation. We pray that you would bless them with excitement and joy as they get ready to be married. And above all, Lord, we pray for their marriages, that they would be brilliant, that they would be a blessing to all those around them as well as to each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Brilliant. What else is happening? Um, on um, 
Wednesday evening, we've got uh, the first uh, in a while uh, of our Connect evenings. Now, at our annual meeting, I just talked about our vision for the year ahead, and that was to be a year of discovery. I invited you to come on a journey with me to discover, first of all, more of God, secondly, more of who we are as a church family, and thirdly, more of who God is calling us to serve, uh, both locally but also uh, in other mission partners that we have further afield. And we're kind of going to take this one term at a time, and so this term we are are just uh, considering a little more of who God is. We're going to kick that off with a connect evening. It's an opportunity. We're inviting all home groups not to meet individually that week, but just to come together, to connect together. And also, anybody else, you don't have to be in a home group. Indeed, it might be your opportunity if you're not really able to be a part of a home group, but it is an opportunity to come together midweek, an opportunity for worship, for prayer, and for some deeper teaching on the subject. And this week, Nick is going to kick us off by talking a little bit about helping us to explore more of who God is. So really love to see you if you're able to come for that. You would be able to connect on Zoom, but hey, you'd miss out on the whole lovely chance to see each other face to face. But please do hop on Zoom if that's helpful or see you here 7.30 on Wednesday evening, open to absolutely everybody. We're going to continue that theme of discovering more of who God is in a series of talks in our 10 o'clock and 8.30 services, and that will start next week. It's the Holy Spirit who reveals to each one of us who God is. It's only by the Holy Spirit we can say Jesus is Lord. And so what better time than to start a series of thinking more about God on Pentecost as we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. So next Sunday at 10 o'clock, it's a communion service, and um, we'll be starting off that series of talks. I just wanted to mention something about this layout. Um, I've put it in the newsletter, but we, a lot of people last week said, oh, can't, can't we do it more often? Um, because we really like it. We like looking at you, Sarah, but we prefer looking at the garden. Uh, okay, well, that's fair, isn't it? I, I understand that. Um, me too, to be honest. So um, we, we're going to keep it this way until the summer holidays when we'll do something a little bit different. But um, if any of you find it a bit difficult to see screens, we are aware that that could be an issue. Please, would you just have a word with me? We've got iPads that you can have and just follow on that. But I must admit, as I was singing, I, I actually really enjoyed the fact I was kind of facing the other half of church, and it felt quite like uh, we can actually see each other as a church family, as we actually have to look towards each other, as well as the garden. Uh, so pick your view, right? Uh, so that's, that was all really good. Thank you. Um, what else did I need to mention? We've got morning prayer at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Um, it's take time? It's not take time. No, no, not yet, no, but it's a good idea. Um, there is something I really want to mention. Um, outreach listeners will be aware, uh, most of the church will be aware that we had a festival here yesterday. Um, it was so great to have our outreach friends with us joining in, uh, either in person or just able to join us on the radio. Uh, but we had so much fun uh, as a church family uh, with uh, just all our uh, gifts were kind of on display. Like, I don't mean that in like a really arrogant way. I'm just like, this is amazing. People in this church family are sharing what they have to be a massive blessing uh, to our community and to each other. And that's what made it. I cannot tell you how super proud I am to be part of this church family. And um, I will single out one person in a minute and they will totally kill me. But I, I could single out so, so many of you, and I, I kind of am so tempted to, but um, from people baking cakes to painting faces to organizing amazing children's crafts, weren't they brilliant, to the baking, uh, cake baking, I'll just keep coming back to that, <laughs> to serving the cakes. You, you, used, you, know, you guys who are all super musically talented just blessed us. The pianists, they were amazing. Elliot, we had so much fun from Ben and Loz and the Caspars in the evening. Uh, it was just fantastic. And I really have to thank Peter because literally he put the whole lot together and organized 
everything and everyone. I kind of swanned around and people said, Sarah, thank you, this is so lovely. I'm going, yeah, great. But it was total reflected glory. I've got to be honest about this. And I just want to say, Peter, thank you. I know you have done an incredible amount of work. Yeah, I know you hate that, but you were amazing. And I just want to ask one thing. If you're wandering around this community and you see a poster advertising the festival, there are quite a lot. Could, could you just put a pair of scissors in your pocket and take it down? It's going to really help us all out. There are so many out there. They do need to come down. I'll definitely get letters if we don't get them down. Um, so please, uh, could you give us a hand in that way if you're able? That would be just great. Fantastic. I've done an awful lot of notices. And um, uh, just to remind you that we've got prayer at the end of this service. If you'd love uh, friends to just pray with you about absolutely anything, uh, the red low chairs at the back there is the place to go. And if somebody's already been prayed for, just come back. There's two people uh, who are there to pray for for you. So if there's a third there, then they're probably being prayed for. Come back. If there's only two of them having a chat, ask if they'll pray for you. They'd love to. Uh, God answers prayer and we just love to see him at work. So do take advantage of that. Do you know what? There's some cake left over. We, we said, um, somebody said to me, do, do you think we should put out a basket for donations? Because you had to pay yesterday. I'm like, listen, it's a day old cake today. You can have it for free. So <laughs> oh, we are nothing but generous around here, I tell you. Uh, so enjoy some cake with your coffee later. Uh, Ian, you better take over. Thank you so much. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have our final uh, song in a moment. Uh, we thought about Jesus ascending into heaven, and so our final song is about looking forward to when Jesus comes back. So it starts with the line, he comes from cl with clouds descending, to looking at when he will return. During this song, I suspect outreach, you might leave us during this song. Uh, and so if you do leave us, those of you listening at Outreach Radio, uh, bless you. Uh, I hope God is with you this week and we'll all be thinking and praying for you as well. Um, we in this building and on Zoom will return after this song for our final blessing. But let's stand if you're able and let's sing together. Lo, he, he comes in clouds descending.
And we come to the point where we say our final blessing. I'm hoping the words are going to come up. Let's say these together. So as you face the screens, you're facing each other. We're blessing each other. Let's say together. The Lord bless you and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be on us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.